Workplace drama is probably something we can all relate to. Water cooler whispers, dirty looks and cold shoulders are all part and parcel of most workplaces and it seems like the highest echelon of motorsport is no different. The divide and rebel between the garages is well documented, whether in the form of Checo posturing but then flattering to deceive or outlandish comments put out by Helmut Marko causing a PR nightmare. The all-dominant team of the modern ground effect era have never been seen in calm seas. Rather, they are a team that excel in crazy situations and capitalize on chaos. No matter which side of the 2021 season you stand, Red Bull's commitment to chaos both on and off track is to be admired. But the recent news dripping out of the Red Bull water cooler perhaps indicates a step too far from some key personnel, with talks of a shocking change coming to the team which could leave one of their merchants of chaos ousted from the team. Want to know whether Helmut Marko is finished at Red Bull? It could really be the end for him, but just how did we get here? And stick around to the end, because things at Mercedes seem like they'll get much worse before they can get better. Helmut, 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 just what are we going to do with you? If you cast your mind back to Marko's comments about Perez, no, not that one, the other one, or maybe the other other one. You'll remember that there was a rather eerie amount of silence from Red Bull as it seemed like everyone but the Milton Keynes racing outfit spoke out on Marco's ignorant comments, with it waiting until the next race weekend before anything was said. But even then, it wasn't even really said by the team, but by Perez himself. Red Bull later came out to say that they don't condone Marco's behavior, not in an official statement mind you, but even then it all just seemed a bit… toothless. Well, the reason for Red Bull's silence has been revealed, and truth be told, we were pretty surprised by what Christian Horner had to say, as he seemed to distance both himself and the racing team from Helmut Marko, having this to say. From Helmut's perspective, he has apologized. He is not an employee of Red Bull Racing, so in terms of why we didn't put out a statement, he's part of the Red Bull Group and the group issued an apology through Service TV. When asked if there would be any formal internal sanctions taken against the 80-year-old Austrian, Horner replied, Helmut is technically a consultant to the group, so it's not really a question for me to answer. It really does seem like Christian is emphasizing just how separate Red Bull Racing and Helmut Marko are, something that's never really been stressed to this extent before. Horner continued his comments about Marko during the Singapore race weekend, going on to say, his contract is with Red Bull GmbH. He's not an employee, he's not on the payroll of Red Bull Racing. To be a director doesn't mean that you are automatically an employee, as we see with other companies if you look at who the directorships are. So his reporting line and structure is to Red Bull GmbH. So that doesn't sit on our books. So despite the impact that Marco has on the team and how he operates, he exists as a separate entity entirely, and it'd be down to the FIA and FOM to issue sanctions to Helmet, as Red Bull Racing has no real power to do so. However, Red Bull does have the power to take action in other ways, something that it appears Horner is actively pushing the team to do, with Brazilian news outlet Globo reporting that things are reaching a breaking point at the Red Bull camp, turmoil originating back to the passing of Dietrich Mateschitz and an ongoing tension within the team due to a conflict between Marco and Horner have come to light, with the Brazilian newspaper having this to say. Horner has been trying to get rid of Marco for some time to control the group's operations in Formula 1 as a whole. Supposedly, Horner also wants to drop Yuki Sonoda from the sister team which would require Red Bull to pay off ex-engine supplier Honda, which have a continued relationship with Red Bull, allowing them to use engine facilities and engineers despite Honda stepping back from the sport for an umpteenth time, to the tune of $10 million, which as the newspaper says is something that Marco has been trying to prevent to avoid future friction with the engine supplier. Marco is in serious danger of losing his position within the team, with a meeting scheduled for the coming week to decide his fate, the report alleges. As well as Horner wanting him gone, Globo also reports that Oliver Mintzlaff, another key figure in Red Bull Racing, being the CEO of corporate projects and new investments, is in agreement about binning off the Austrian advisor. I guess we'll just have to wait for the revelations that will come to light after this internal meeting, but it really isn't looking good for the rebel advisor as it seems like the hyenas are drawing in ever closer. Horner's public statement about Marco's comments, in short saying that they weren't right and lessons had been learned by the 80 year old, and publicly distancing the team from him and his continued ignorance when partnered with these rumors paints a pretty damning picture for the 80 year old. The condemnation he received in the paddock from the public, drivers and team principals seems like it may have given Horner and the other higher 
higher-ups at Red Bull looking to move Helmut on the ammunition that they need to make the final push. In the sport's continued movements towards diversity and respect of other cultures, there isn't much room in the sport for continued ignorance, and there's only so many lessons to be learned that a team can give someone before it just gets repetitive and brings into question whether the team is willing to act just past token gestures. I think Alfa Romeo managing director Alessandro Aluni Bravi said it best with his reaction to Marco's recent comments. Formula One as a community, we need to be respectful. We started a path altogether going towards diversity and inclusion, and this must be factual. We don't need to just have a strategy in place, we need to have behaviors that show people how we value this in Formula One. If Red Bull are a team used to operating in chaos, then the yang to their yin is Mercedes, who approach the sport from a far more clinical standpoint, often cutting things off before they reach the point where they can sow any sort of disruption. This was true in their years of dominance, however the last two seasons paint a different picture of a team scrambling to stay afloat and figure out just where it all went wrong, with Qatar becoming the fulcrum point for the team reaching their nadir. Truly, there is no lower point for a team than their drivers colliding, compromising both races and squandering the hard work of the trackside engineers and those back at the factory. Mercedes will be hoping that the return of their talismanic team principal Toto Wolff this weekend, after being physically absent from the past few racing weekends, will steady the ship somewhat. But it appears that the first point of call for Toto will be dealing with the continued whiplash from the disastrous Qatar Grand Prix. So what is Toto Wolff's first question going to be on the media day this week? All looking forwards, right? Surely he'll want to just leave all of that drama back in Asia and move on with the barbecues and hoedowns. Well, sadly for Toto, no. It's going to be an interrogation about the past few weekends, especially with it coming to light that Hamilton may face further punishment beyond an already 50,000 euro fine and public scolding, with the FIA announcing, the FIA is revisiting the incident in which Lewis Hamilton crossed a live track during the Qatar Grand Prix. The FIA notes that Lewis was apologetic during the subsequent stewards hearing into the incident and acknowledged that the crossing was a serious safety breach. However, in view of his role model status, the FIA is concerned about the impression his actions may have created on young drivers. It seems like Hamilton's actions that weekend will go on to haunt Mercedes for a little while longer, with Wolf likely to catch a concentrated dose of media ire from him not being around in the past few weeks. While a part of every race meeting over the course of Japan and Qatar, with his last in-person vision of Mercedes being George Russell in the wall and Hamilton being denied a podium at Singapore, Wolf's presence perhaps may not have been felt in quite the same way, as him speed dialing Russell's helmet during the Qatar incident would perhaps have carried less potency than the thought of seeing Toto in the garage after the incident. So hopefully, Wolf can work on steadying the ship as Mercedes now look to take second away from Perez in the Drivers' Championship and continue to secure second in the Constructors as Ferrari look to take back a spot which should realistically be theirs if it weren't for their continued blunders and lack of capitalizing potential. Meanwhile, a penny for the thoughts of Aston Martin.